so uh, this is my uh, first foray into American muscle. Uh, I love it. <laughs> it's really nice and simple. Um, big V8 block, 6.6 .6 litre. Loads of torque, it just doesn't run properly or start properly or stop actually, the brakes need looking at. So um, after loads of research, found out that a company called Holly do a fuel injection system for it. So I looked online and it seemed to be really simple. So um, I bought one yesterday and I'm going to try and fit it over the next couple of weekends. I don't know how long it's going to take. My last video with the fuel injection for the Cobra, the V12 Jaguar, took a couple of months. But this seems to be really plug and play. So this isn't an instructional video of how to do it because actually on their website, Holly do a really good um, how-to video. Um, but I'm going to do this because um, just show people hopefully that you can do it anywhere and, and it doesn't bring up any sort of complications that uh, a normal person on their driveway or in a garage can't cope with. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a luxury of a garage like I did last time. Um, one, that wasn't my garage. And two, this doesn't fit into a standard English garage. It's just a bit too long, so I can't work and not get down the sides. So I'm doing it on the driveway. So I think if I can do it on the driveway, I think most people can. So again, this is just how I did it, my process. I am following their guidelines on the Hollywood website. Uh, and I'm going to do it bit by bit and see how it goes. So watch this space. Hopefully it's going to turn into an epic V8 American muscle car. Although this is the pony car monster. Peace. Okay, so I'll just quickly show you what I came with the kit. Uh, it came in a big box. Americans like it big, obviously. So um, first of all, we get the, the actual Holly EFI sniper car that goes on the top. Uh, fuel injection. Um it makes up, I've got the conversion plate in there as well, so that's going to sit on top. Uh, so that, that's computer inside, it all becomes literally all one unit, which is really exciting because the last kit I did, you had to do everything, it's got the throttle sensor positioning on it, all of that, which is great. This is the mast kit, so it comes with um, all the fuel system that you need. It's got the high pressure pump, um, pre filter, the after filter and all the other gubbings that you need to actually with the connections that will connect up to the fuel tank. Now this requires a return fuel line. So it comes with um, bits and bobs that you can actually drill into the, um, the sender unit and do a return line through there. So that's lovely. That should actually be quite easy because that doesn't involve taking the tank out. Um, so it comes with the air fuel mixture sensor, which is lambda sensor. It comes with one, but it actually comes with a drill, drilling one. I don't know how effective that's going to be. The last one I used, I welded it, but comes with it. So you don't have to do any welding on this at all. It's just literally screwing and bolting. Got that. That's the actual sensor there, like last time. Um, the exciting bit about this is <laughs> it comes with the computer. I do get you, they do get a seven inch version of this, which I might get because it's a bit cooler, but it's self learning. So all you need to do once you set everything up, you just type in the parameters and it gives you a base map for the engine to work from. After that, apparently it learns itself and it tweaks itself accordingly. So you don't have to go into a rolling mode and get it mapped, which is, that's exciting. I'm looking forward to that. I mean, I did enjoy the rolling mode. I probably will take it on there to get the BHP out of it before and after. But uh, yeah, that's going to be interesting. Um, the other things that came with it are, yeah, this is the conversion plate, that map. I mate that Sniper EFI onto the Pontiac 6.6 .6 litre. Um, all the fuel high pressure hoses, um, basically everything you need. Okay, so the first plan is to take the carb off, the first thing to do that. Um, and then they recommend just literally put the um, EFI Sniper on there first and deal with everything else after that. So that's what I'm gonna do. I've already unbolted most of the stuff, so just to show how simple it is. Uh, American V8, if you're used to them, you know how simple it is. Um, I've already taken the fuel line off um, because I'm going to be replacing that anyway with their high um, pressure fuel pipe. Make a note about where all the vacuum pipes go that you're going to put off the existing car because you want to know um, where to put them back on the EFI kit. Now, the EFI kit does come with uh, comprehensive instructions about where to plumb everything in, but safer than sorry, make a note about where the carbs, uh, where the um, vacuum feeds come from. So I'm just going to go around the other side. 
obviously already unbolted that, that comes off. Um, then um, disconnect the spring, um, disconnect the throttle linkage, which I've already actually unbolted, so I'm just unclipping there. Four bolts, either one, two, three, and four. I've already undone those bolts. There's no magic formula to it, just undo them, and it should literally just come off like that. It's that easy. Head for the gasket, take that off. Now, I'm going to clean all that up now, and then I'm going to put the other um, EFI sniper on top of that with the conversion plates. Okay, what I've done is I've cleaned up the surface of the manifold. Um, I've hoovered it, hoovered it up as well because um, as you unscrew the studs, because you need to replace the studs, the bit there goes just into the top bit, so make sure you can get in there, clean bits out. Um, the bolts come through from the other side. This is the conversion plate to fit the quadrajet from the quadrajet to the four barrel system. Um, so all I need to do from here is actually just do these Allen bolts up, which I've already positioned. Uh, yep, well, I've just tightened the Allen bolts up. Um, obviously there's a gasket I've put underneath which comes with the kit. Don't tighten them up too tight. Do them diagonally, diagonally first so you get an even load when you're tightening them up. Um, you obviously want to make sure there's a definite seal because you don't want excess air getting into the carb, which will affect all the readings and make it actually not run as good. So after that, it's, it's, that's onto there and the fitting of the carb. It's that simple. I just need to bolt these on and um, I'll come back to you when that's done. Okay, so obviously it's never as simple as it could be. Um, I need to get a return feed back into the tank. Um, and there's no return line on this. It's just a single feed out. So I've actually had to drop the tank um, and I've taken the fuel sender out. Um, and one on the video, they said we can drill into this bit here and we can put the uh, return feed valve into there. Um, and then that should be the fuel system sorted. I just need to run the line from that bit right to the front to the um, sniper unit. So, um, yep, yeah, I will show you when that's done. So the sniper instruction is actually very comprehensive. Um, I'm basically following what they're saying. Uh, I'm going to go through the uh, fuel sender. So what I've done with mine is I've drilled the hole. Um, as we can see here, drill the hole. That goes onto the washer with a seal. There's another washer with a seal with a nut. That goes to the other side. Then there's going to be a hose end there. On the hose end, there's called a hose cuff, which goes into the submerges into the uh, fuel tank. So it's always immersed in fuel. I'm guessing so that doesn't spray vaporize the fuel when it goes back. Not too sure about that. I'm sure somebody will correct me. Um, what I did to get that actually on was boil some water, um, leave it in a cup for three minutes or so, and then it squidges on because it's very hard plastic. Uh, and that way, that's never coming off. Um, don't need a hose clamp on that. One note on this as well, when you position the fuel cuff and the hole, make sure it doesn't interfere with this. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, you're going to get faulty fuel gauge reading. And this also has to be cut to length now. It's obviously the bottom of the tank, so I'm just going to trim it there. Um, and then that's ready to install. Okay, so that's the fuel tank remounted. Um, that is the return feed to the tank from the engine. So now what I'm doing is I'm just constructing the... Uh, fuel pump and filter arrangement which will go in line with the fuel pipe from the tank to the engine um, and it's all going to be under here somewhere but uh, I'll construct it put it under and then show you where I'm at with that. Now this is the fuel coming out of the tank. Uh, I've got new pipes coming up now what I've done here is I've mounted it here yeah, now I'm probably going to get slated for this but unfortunately this is the only option I could do um the brackets I was going to mount it on the other side of the rail but the it wasn't wide enough um I couldn't fit it on there 
um, and there wasn't any room to drill holes. I couldn't get the drill up there. So this was where I'm going to have it. I'm going to have a sheet of metal coming over here. I've done the clearance check here, done clearance check here. So that's all going to be sheeted over anyway. Um, but yeah, you've got the after filter here. You've got the fuel pump here. Uh, and the pre-filter there, which is the 100 micron, sorry, that's the end of the um, uh, return, uh, the return hose. Uh, so yeah, unfortunately, even look down here, which I was wanted to do, was put it in between the back of the tank, which is where they suggested on the video, but there is no room, because they've got this huge uh, muffler here. So I'm gonna have to, uh, I've worked it around it. So, okay, so I'm gonna, put the pipes to the front of the vehicle and start connecting everything. I'm then now gonna do the lamb descents on the exhaust. Okay, well actually after taking the wheel off, it's got quite good access to, yeah, and that's when I'm gonna put the lamb descent. So which measures the air fuel ratio and adjusts accordingly. Can't actually get it drilled in there because it's very tight on space. So I've actually found a 90 degree drill bit, which I didn't know existed until now. So I suppose what, um, tools you can come up with when you need them. So I'm going to try and use that and uh, fit the sensor into the top of the um, exhaust. Um, they're not supposed to go in horizontal or below horizontal because the moisture collects on the end of the sensor and it gives a false reading. So you've got to give it above 10 degrees. Uh, last time I mounted, I mounted it directly at 90 into it on my Cobra. So that's what I'm going to try and do with this one. So let's see how that goes. I'm not sure if you can see this, but I've got a huge smile on my face because I've just found my new favourite tool. Um, this is awesome, 90 degree um, drill bit attachment. Let's see where they can just drill it into there. There we go, unbelievable. So I just have to make that hole bigger to get the lambda sensor in. Cool, I'm just finishing off with a hole cutter because it's a bit more convenient. Probably go uh, about three quarters in. Recommended for everyone. <laughs> right, okay, well that's the actual sensor being put in. Um, I put it at a slight angle pointing towards the chassis, obviously just to get away from the, um, the vacuum feeds for the uh, TH400 gearbox. And also it does give me access at that angle to uh, a spanner so I can actually tighten it up, which I would do now. Um, so it might be worth note that when you do drill a hole, make sure you've got access to actually tighten the, um, the sensor up as well. Otherwise you're gonna have to do it finger tight. Great. Okay, all the uh, plumbing is now in place. All the fuel hoses, return hoses. Here we go, that's the pre-filter 100 micron filter. Going to the fuel pump, because it's all wired in now. Um, after filter. And then I've uh, replaced every single pipe along here. Um, and then uh, we're now going to the engine bay to plumb it into the AFI. Um, the throttle linkage is now in and correct. So now I'm getting full travel 100% has been welded up. So there's, it was a bit loose. So I wasn't getting all the way travel. Um, on it, so that's all good. Um, then you have to actually put the uh, vacuum hoses on the back of the uh, EFI unit, and they are here. But make sure you have to get them in the right uh, place. Uh, this one here is from the distributor, so that's a vacuum advance on the distributor. That needs to go to the ported uh, side uh vacuum hole in the, in the uh efi unit that's just a standard manifold vacuum it has to be ported because otherwise it won't read a vacuum or idle uh man the vacuum be coming from the top of the unit not from the manifold um so that is quite vital to get that in the right place 
other people disagree. I mean, I've got quite a high vacuum because um, I'm running a race cam in this. Uh, as far as I know, that I need to double check. I've got the receipt for it um, from the previous owner because I've only just bought this car. Um, so I just need to check whether the, the race cam has been fitted. But um, yeah, if you've got low vacuum, that's what... Uh, that's why you need to go for the uh, ported side of the vacuum. And then that big one in the middle is for the brake booster, which I haven't yet got, but we'll buy and install to improve the braking. Okay, we're now at the stage of the wiring. Um, it seems to be really straightforward. Um, all the sensors are in place. So I've got the uh, temperature sensor in there. Um, but actually one of the things about it, which I've read about online of quite a bit actually, is because that's taken the port for the uh temperature uh sensor um so there's no actual gauge we'll be reading on there so i'm gonna have to drill and tap in there to put the uh to put that in which will give me a dial reading of the temperature although the fi unit on the computer does read the temperature it's nice to actually have the dial reading on it so that i'm gonna have to do later um, the other's pretty straightforward. It tells you where to connect everything. Um, that obviously needs to be connected to the positive side. Um, but the EFI unit's basically four wires. So uh, that wire is the uh, wire they said to connect to the minus side of the coil, which is what I've done. I've remounted the coil vertically, actually. Originally, it's horizontal. Um, I'm not keen on not being horizontal because the oil sits in it at a funny level and then it's... Um, it corrodes the top of the what's inside the coil so mounting it horizontal generally is the consensus obviously i'm going to move those cables away from the actual coil to stop the interference um then you need your live uh, your feed your so your switched feed which is from the ignition when you turn it on that i'm actually just going to run from an immobilizer so at the moment it's just on the switch um and then the other two are literally the Minus and positive, which runs here to the uh, battery connectors. I will do a better job of that at the moment. I've just done um, those are temporary. Um, and that's it. I've now plugged in the air fuel uh, sensor, uh, the Lambda sensor. That's all plugged into there. Um, what other ones are plugged into? Oh, then you've also got, got the main harness, which you just plug into there. That's got the relay and also the fuse is under there again that's gonna to have to be tidied up later and the one last bit which is over on this side um which is the auxiliary outputs now i'm gonna have one of these the brown one goes to the taco so i'm gonna have the taco and this has the bonnet mounted taco so that's going to be quite exciting um one of them's going to be my uh switch uh, ground switch for the fan so set that to come on at probably 82 or 86 i have to read up about that what's what temperature and the other one's for the gearbox so i'm going to have a relay because it's a th400 automatic gearbox there's a kick down solenoid which uh now originally it's mechanical off the old carb when you press when you put your foot on the accelerator at some point it would then activate a mechanical um uh, mechanical valve which then uh, activate in the gearbox which would then increase the pressure so when you put your foot down there's a kick down um, but now there's a solenoid on there so one of those is going to be a ground earth again for a relay and um, you can set that for 96 percent throttle so when the throttle is on 96 percent or 90 percent it will actuate the uh, relay which I actuate the solenoid in the gearbox and then that will increase the pressure in the gearbox so the three wires which I'm going to route elsewhere so that again that's something I have to do later not essential to the startup of it but I will go there down that route later um, and then you've got the final bit which you plugged in which is the console which is actually inside so I've already put that in there through the bulkhead mounting through there i've armored conduit all the wires that have come out because i just don't like loose wires so yeah uh, this is the moment this is the startup um i've been round and checked every single hose every single connection everything that i need to think that i've done and i haven't done it once i've done it twice i've done it three times i've done it five times just to make sure because i'm a bit like that and 
I do trust my work, but I always say from the source, I've checked all the hoses. Um, also, make sure when you start a nip, because you've been having tools, make sure everything's free from the area, um, no loose wires, make sure the fan, the fan belt's free of all, all other items that it possibly might have left around. Uh, right, let's get inside and try and start it. Okay, as you can see, I'm actually doing a bit of a rewiring job in here, but um, <laughs> I hope they haven't disturbed any wires that I need. Uh, okay, so this is real time. Let's see what happens. Uh, but I've read the manual over and over and over again. So I'm just going to follow it. Uh, it's normally off by heart. So um, ignition on. You should hear the fuel pump come on. There we go. Okay. That's the fuel pump doing its thing. Um, now what I'm going to do, if the system's pressurised, I'm going to quickly run round and check whether there's any leaks. But please, please, please do this because it could go very wrong if there isn't. It's going to be the main ones here. There's no leaks here. That's the fuel pump and the filters. No leaks here. Um, just having a look under the fuel tank. There seems to be no leaks coming out there. Running around to the front. The connector there. That's the return. That's where the fuel uh, pressure regulator is. Set at 55 PSI. Right, there's no leaks there. Seems to be all good. Okay, let's move on to the next stage. Okay, so following instructions, select wizard. That's my EFI unit. Next, how many cylinders? Eight, hopefully. Engine displacement, which in English is 6.6 .6 litres. Next, our target speed 850, I think, at the moment, just to see. What's that jumping around? Okay, 850. Next. Street. I know I've got street cam in there. Next. No power added. Um, right, next page. Uh, my CD is a coil. Next. And that's it, press start. Calibrating, calibrating, calibrating. Please cycle ignition to complete the operation. Okay, so off. Fuel pump one again, rebooting. And I think that's it. Okay, um, I'm just gonna have a quick wander around. Last check, and then I'm going to start it. Okay, I've done that. All good. Um, one more thing to do. Go to the home screen. Select monitor icon. Select initial startup. Um, these just double checking that. The outside temperature is 57 degrees. Yep, it's kind of cold today. ISC position 86%. That's, uh, that's about right. The map sensor seems to be a bit high at 103 it's supposed to be 95 to 102 but that's okay uh battery voltage is 12 volts mine's reading it's probably i think the battery is probably dead actually i did charge it but i think it's probably an old battery hopefully it will start um thought positioning sensor so if i push the accelerator down bit by bit by bit by bit by bit all the way down i get 103 percent that means i'm going to go faster Okay, I might have to put a limit on that, but that seems to cut all the travel in there. Engine revs at stall because I haven't started it. Okay, right, okay, okay. Bit nervous, always nervous at this point. So, uh, okay, let's see what happens. Right, confession time. I did have a blip there. I didn't seem to have a live uh, switch uh, ignition to the solenoid. So I've just fixed that. Um, again, I don't know if this is going to work. You are literally with me on the journey here. So as you can see from the dashboard, I've had to wire <laughs> that as the ignition. Uh, let's see what happens. <laughs> Fuck, I'm not allowed to start 
Oh, that's amazing! I'm well happy with that. That's literally on the button. Didn't think that would do that, honestly. Uh, yeah, boy. <laughs> to sort out uh, the I have to the idol at the moment it's quite high but I'm guessing that's because it's cold and the IAC position sensor um I have to do that when it's up to temperature um at the moment it's not uh and everything else seems to be reading fine um job done I'll just have to tidy up wires and do extra bits